What's up everyone? So it's time for another trombone lesson. Today we are going to learn about the minor pentatonic scale. Why, you ask? Back in November, I posted a YouTube short here on my channel. It was my very first YouTube short ever. And to this date, it is the number one video on my channel. It has over 45,000 views. In case you haven't seen the YouTube short yet, here it is. <laughs> So you all obviously love this video. I got a lot of comments on it, a lot of questions asking about how I played the exercise in the video. So I thought, why not turn it into a whole lesson? We're gonna go over the minor pentatonic scale and this advanced flexibility exercise. So no matter what level you're at, you can follow along. You can do the lesson about the scale, do the simple exercises, and if you're more advanced, you can stay tuned for that exercise at the end. So the exercise I played there was kind of my variation from a book called Advanced Flexibility Studies for the Jazz Trombonist by Greg Waits. So I found this book kind of as I was setting up my new studio and my new office. It was just one of the gems that I found buried in all the music books. And I did find it on Amazon. So if you're curious about the book, I have the link down in the description. You can go check it out. First off, let's learn what a pentatonic scale is. No, not pentatonics. Well, I guess if you had more than one, it would be pentatonics with a C, S. But never mind, never mind. <laughs> so a pentatonic scale contains five notes. Penta means five or having five. Think like the shape a pentagram, five sides, right? Pentatonic scale, five notes. Today we're gonna focus on the minor pentatonic scale, which has a really cool sound to it. I'm sure you've heard it before. And you can use this scale a lot when you're improvising over many different styles of music, like pop or blues or Latin. It's a really good sound to know, a really good scale to have under your fingers or your slide, and it's super useful. You can really get a lot of mileage out of knowing this scale. So you can build the minor pentatonic scale in two ways. For example, let's start in the key of B flat, the people's key. So if we were basing it off of the major scale, we would have our one, which is B flat. Then next up, we would have our flat three, which is D flat. Then after that, we have our four, which is E flat, our five, which is F, and then our flat seven, which is an A flat. So that's one way to think about it based off the major scale. The next way to think about it is if you wanna think in B flat minor and the key of B flat minor and just use those scale degrees. So you would have one, three, four, five, and seven. And that flat three and that flat seven are already in the key signature. However you wanna think about it, doesn't matter, but that's what it is, only five notes. So now let's check out what that B flat minor pentatonic scale sounds like. <laughs> So again, it doesn't matter which way you wanna think about it, whether you wanna base it off the minor scale or the major scale, eventually you'll just start to know the B flat minor pentatonic scale as its own sound. And if you're one of my students, you know I like to talk about sounds a lot. Of course, now we have to learn that scale in all 12 keys and all over the range of the horn. You should definitely do that with, with anything you learn, right? Don't just play it in one key, play it in all 12 and throughout the entire range of the instrument. So we're gonna learn four of those keys today. We're gonna do B flat, A, A flat, and G. So going down in half steps. So now let's learn the A minor pentatonic scale. Think about it for a second, what would the notes be? And this is a great time to talk about transposition. So if you're new to transposing and new to playing in different keys, there's actually a really easy trick that's going to help you. So instead of thinking note, 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 that's like kind of a lot for your brain to digest and to work on. I like to think of it in numbers or the scale degrees. So like we we're talking about in B flat, if we're going off our major scale, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. Okay, think of those numbers. And if you want a little transposition lesson in my video, how to play high on trombone with joy to the world, you can go check it out up there. Now I know it's a Christmas video, but at the end of it, I did do a transposition lesson. If you wanna go check that out, I go over this concept in more detail over there. 
So using that numbers idea, now we're gonna go to our next key for today. We are doing A, so A minor pentatonic scale. So we have our one, which is gonna be A. Then our three is gonna be C, our four is gonna be D, our five is gonna be E, and our flat seven is going to be G. So here's what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, let's do two more for today. So next is going to be A flat. Think about the notes. So we have A flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, and our flat seven is going to be G flat. Here's the A flat minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> All right, and our last one is going to be G. Again, think about it. Think about the numbers. I'll give you a minute. Okay, G minor pentatonic. So our notes are gonna be G. Our flat three is going to be B flat. Our four is going to be C. Our five is going to be D. And our flat seven is going to be F. Here's the G minor pentatonic. So the next step, again, like I said, is to play it in all 12 keys and play it all over the range of the horn, all over the horn. So what does it mean when I say play it all over the horn? Well, it's this idea that we wanna play our scales, any scale we learn, any arpeggio we learn, any pattern we learn, we wanna play it all over the range of the instrument. So that means play it from the lowest note you can possibly play up to the highest note that you can possibly play. And this is different for everyone. No matter where you're at with your range and your range development, you can still do this. So this is going back to that idea of sounds that I was talking about. I like to think of my scales or my keys or my arpeggios or my chords I don't like to get so nitty gritty into what the notes are is learning what the sound is. So for example, we wanna play this sound of B flat minor pentatonic all over the instrument. We're just getting used to the way it sounds. So we wanna get away from playing our scales starting and ending on one note, right? The root. We just usually start and end on the root and do our scales in one octave or two octaves. And that's a good way to do it, but we also wanna be able to play the scale everywhere. It just keeps going in every direction, right? It can keep going up or it can keep going down. So for instance, here's this idea using the B flat minor pentatonic. We're gonna start down maybe on a low F and we'll go up to B flat. So you can kind of hear how it sounds. <laughs> So yeah, that's the idea of this concept of sounds, right? We're just kind of living in that sound, living in that world. We're not really worrying too much about what note we're starting on and what note we're ending on. So go ahead and do that with all four of the minor pentatonic scales that we've gone over today. B flat, A, A flat, and G. And of course, when you're done with that, go ahead and do it in all 12 keys. So kind of the last step about getting used to this idea of the sound is then now that you've learned the scale, you've learned the notes, you've played it all over the range of your instrument, the next step is you can improvise using those notes. So you really get used to what this sounds like. A cool way to do it is with a drone or to a tune that is in that key. But today I'm just gonna show you how to do it real quick. <laughs> Okay, now you know
know what to do, make sure you do that in all 12 keys. But don't make the 12 keys thing be like super overwhelming. You can start with whatever pace you're comfortable with, right? You could just do one key a week. I would definitely start with the keys of tunes that you are working on. Okay, so now that we know what our minor pentatonic scale sounds like, we are going to go on to that more advanced exercise. I have the sheet music down below so you can follow along. But again, if you're interested in checking out the book, I have the link down in the description. So I changed this up a little bit from the exercise in the book. I just changed the rhythm a little bit, but the book is where I got the idea. This exercise only uses four of those five notes from that minor pentatonic scale. So we're gonna start again in the good old key of B flat. So our four notes are gonna be B flat, D flat, E flat, and F. Those are the only four notes that we need. So this advanced exercise utilizes a technique that is called playing against the grain or playing against the slide. And in order to be able to do this, your flexibility needs to be on point. So if you're not practicing your flexibility exercises or your lip slurs every day, you need to get on that ASAP so you can start playing cool stuff like this. What we're going to do is we are going to extend the slide outward as we play the minor pentatonic scale. So we go from our B flat to D flat. So like I said, flexibility, no tongue. So you're utilizing a lip slur as you move the slide out. So go ahead and try that out a few times, see how it feels. Next, we're gonna go from D flat to E flat out in third position. Again, try it out a few times, see how it feels. Then you can kind of do three. So B flat, D flat to E flat. See how it goes, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, no tongue, make sure you're slurring. If you can't quite get the pitches to speak, you can tongue them first just to really solidify the pitch. Try that out. Now we're gonna add in the fourth note, which is F. And in order to be able to play against the grain, we're gonna play the F out in fourth position. So if you haven't done that before, don't worry about it, it's easy. Just play it in first, first, so you can kind of hear the pitch and hear what it sounds like. And try to match the pitch. And just keep doing that until you match the pitch. And then we're gonna try one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the idea of how to do this exercise. Play it as slow as you need to. Okay, this is about whatever tempo is comfortable for you. So then let's go ahead and go through the rest of the keys that we learned and figure out all those positions. I'll give you a hint, it follows a pattern. It just goes down the slide. So the next key, A, think about our notes. We had A, C, D, and E. Right, those are the notes in their natural positions, but we're going out, right? So we have A to C. Two to three, right? And then we're gonna play the D in fourth. And then the E we're gonna find out in fifth position. Now that's gonna feel squirrely. Again, if you haven't done it before, play the E in second and then out in fifth. Right, do that as many times as you need to to match the pitch. Then go through slow. Eventually it will feel like you're just flowing with your arm as you speed up the exercise. It'll just feel like a natural motion. All right, moving on, A flat. Again, we're following a pattern here. We're just going down the slide. So the first one went from one to four, then two to five. Now we're going three to six, okay? Talking about positions here. So we have A flat, 
in third position. And then we have C flat in fourth position. Right now we'll do A flat, C flat, D flat out in fifth. Now we're adding that E flat out in sixth. Okay, you get the idea. Now, last one, let's do G. So again, following a pattern here, if you haven't noticed. So we have G in fourth, B flat in fifth, C in sixth, and then D out in seventh. Again, going back to that transposing idea, once you get really comfortable with the way this sounds, it shouldn't be super hard to like move from key to key. I wouldn't worry about too much about each individual note, but just go for that sound, right? Create the sound in a comfortable key in B flat and then just match it as you go out the slide. Again, you wanna use no tongue for any of these. It's like a flexibility exercise or a lip slur. We're just, instead of doing our lip slurs up and down in one position like we normally do, we're extending out the slide, right? So now let's go ahead and play the whole exercise. Once you have those built up and you feel comfortable with the flexibility, start putting it to a tempo, right? Start being able to play this exercise like all four in a row. We're going to do three different tempos today, 60 beats a minute, 70 beats a minute, and 80 beats a minute. But by all means, do not let those limit you. Obviously the goal is to go faster and faster and faster with these as you get more comfortable. All right, here's 60 beats a minute. beats a minute. Here's 80 beats a minute. the video everyone I hope you liked the trombone lesson today like I said this minor pentatonic scale is a super cool sound and it's just super useful for improv or playing the trombone or music in general it's just something really good to know you'll get a lot of mileage out of it and I hope you have fun practicing it let me know if you have questions about anything we went over today down in the comments I would love to hear from you if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss what I have coming up next if you'd like to take a trombone lesson with me, please visit my lessons website. I'll leave the link down in the description. So you'll head over there and you can fill out a new student questionnaire. I am currently accepting new students. I teach students of all ages and all ability levels. So don't be shy. If you're interested in taking a lesson, please reach out to me. If you found this video helpful and useful and you would like to show your support for me and for my channel, please head over to Patreon and consider becoming a donor over there. I would really appreciate your support. All the money and the proceeds and donations just goes directly back into this YouTube channel so I can continue to make free YouTube videos for you every week. Okay, everyone, happy pentatonic practicing and I'll see you next time. See you next week, bye.